All right. Hello, viewers. Scott here again with Connor Murphy as well for an episode of a trading podcast. What do we call it again? I forgot, Connor. What's the title of it? What are we going to call it? We're, we're going to call it uh, Trade Talks, Pippin' Ain't Easy. I thought yeah, Pippin' Ain't Easy. All right. So it's the first episode <laughs> of Pippin' Ain't Easy. All right. So okay. how about just, just let us let everyone know about your journey so far in the Forex. We'll start with that, Connor. From, from from the start, I, I um, started trading. I was just bumming around. I was fighting in Australia and I was, I was training every day. And basically, um, I heard that my uncle had sold his uh, financial business for a lot of money. And I thought to myself, I could get in on that. Uh, I knew that he, he was selling shares. So I went to um, download uh, shares. Uh, program off the internet, and I downloaded a forex uh, bed from FF, FXCM. Yeah, yeah. Look back from that. Um, as I told you before, Scotty, I was trading live money, and I didn't know what the candles were. I didn't see them plate the candles. I didn't know the difference between the two of them. I didn't know that a, a red candle was bearish in a and a blue candle was uh, bullish, and uh, <laughs> um, as you can imagine, lost a fair bit of money. And so I, I kept doing that circle of doom, Scotty, like you know, finding a different trading uh, system, uh, you know, whether it was a five-minute scalping system or you know, or a trend trading system. And I thought I could do them all, and uh, it turns out I couldn't. And um, yeah, just in a disaster. But I knew there was something about the candle. I had to learn, and so I typed into um, YouTube uh, trading without indicators, and naked trading came up, which was Walter Peters stuff, and then then I just started following Walter Peters and doing all that, um, and then eventually I joined the forum, and uh, that's where we met. That's it. Yes, the great place that is the naked forex how, now. For how, did we, how did we actually? How did we actually meet that? So like. Because I was after a trading partner, and, what, and I don't actually know the story. Uh, maybe he – well, he would have known your background, which is sport-based, and he would have known mine as well. So that might have been the um, the catalyst, perhaps, that triggered the uh, – yeah, that might have been it, I reckon. That's what I'm thinking. That's a good question, though, because he, he, he did – he matched it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it was, uh, yeah, he knew that we'd have the report. It's a bit like, because yeah, yeah. our relationship's a bit like that, that uh, Sleepers in Seattle movie with Tom, with Tom Hanks. <laughs> That's a really good way to put it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've exactly. never met, we just, we just talked on the radio to each other. That's true, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah we won't be going to London, <laughs> unfortunately, everyone. That's, um, no, no. There hasn't yeah, been the yeah. announcement of the um, Trader of the Month either or the Forum Member of the Month. So, I mean, there might be a possibility <laughs> one of us can go, but they'd be very generous of Walden to do that. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I might, much chance, I, I so, might um, be able to fit what's, in. What's the go? Have you been, you been looking at the charts this week or what? All right. So, I, I haven't taken any trades on the demo account, everyone. I can't show everyone my double Bollinger Band method, but I can show you the charts, you know, that I'm interested in and I can explain to yep. you sort of why. So, um, it's a bit of an exotic pair. It's the pound Singapore dollar daily. And I'll just zoom out here for everyone. So, I've just got a 20 day moving average. And on the daily, it is quite sideways. But on the four hourly, it's it's moved down a little bit, as you can see here now, everyone. And there was a setup that was presented just with this candle here. And I'm just showing everyone. It's, it's a bit of an engulfing candle, bearish engulfing candle, just bouncing off the midline. And for people familiar with the double Bollinger Band method, but I missed that trade because I work a day job. So I, I can't check the candles every four hours. So I'm officially... Going back to the daily pairs. So nothing has happened this week. Um, the US dollar, Singapore dollar daily as well is slowly coming down. But 
currently nothing really here. How about how about you, Connor? Have you had a chance to to see anything that, that jolts your interest at all? Only Aussie uh, a cab on the yep. dark. Okay, we'll bring that up. Ben trade sort of that was triggered at the start of the day. If you if you bring that up, yep. however, I haven't actually got into it. I'm just looking at might get into a lot. You see how it's that my only issue is it's on the support. It's gone through the support and resistance zone a little bit, but otherwise yep. I'd take it. Okay, I'm bringing up now. So now it's blasted past the. Oh, I see. So it's. Yeah, so with yeah. the bend trades, oh, so it, that, that upward move that's occurred in that, that previous candle, so the current candle's sort of printing a bit of a, a bearish kangaroo tail. Yeah, yeah. So that previous yeah. candle that's quite bullish, that, that's the break that, of the rule? Or? Yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's what, that's good. What's, um, see yeah. how on my, on my uh, charts, the, um, it's just, like it's gone through the support. It's gone through the support a little bit, a little bit too much. Still not too bad. Um, I might see how it goes later on after the Asian session to see how it goes. See if I <coughs> have a look at it. But yeah, um, yeah. Like I said, we're only trading demo at the moment. I, I don't suggest anyone who watches us to take any of these trades. But yes, uh, yeah. We need a we need a disclaimer. <laughs> we need a legal disclaimer. So sorry, everyone. So this is, um, we're not professional financial consultants, so just be very wary of Forex. It's very high risk and you can lose more than your initial investments. So please consult a professional and back test and demo test your trading before jumping into the live markets or else you can end up with a story like Connor's or myself. Myself, myself the story is very similar. I knew a little bit, but the psychology, if it's not uh, well established and your risk management isn't correct, You'll um you'll lose money and quite quickly. So just a risk disclaimer. Please just take this as general advice. We're not telling you to invest your money into forex or anything like that. So please be careful. And just yes, we're not professionals. We're just talking forex. We're not giving advice here. So please be be wary of that. So we've done that now. The official stuff's out of the way. So <laughs> we don't we don't want to get sued. Don't don't sue it. All right. So don't do that. <laughs> So what, how did you how did you get into uh, forex? Yours is completely different to mine. I just sort of stumbled upon it on the internet late at night. Yeah. And so um, I met James Kensington's brother Ryan at the gym I trade at Perth, and he was during you know normal working hours. He was at the gym, and I just asked him you know what he did, and he mentioned that. And then it sort of started. I sort of ignored it at the start. I was like, what the hell's that? Like that seemed weird, and what that's impossible like to make money. From your computer, I was I didn't understand, but then I sort of looked into it more, and he suggested the forum, the Naked Forex Now forum. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, just Google search that, and it's a paid subscription service. But that's really where you'll be put in uh, an environment that will teach you really, you know, how to trade, and if you use it properly, if you back test and get that software or a similar similar program, and then put your results up. That's when you can really start growing. It took me a little while to actually fully use the forum correctly, but once you do, and you you just acknowledge your mistakes and stuff, and you want to learn, you can actually really grow as a trader. You want to be patient. That's the big thing that we're probably both learning here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I found the same thing actually. I was just like a little fly on the wall in the in the forum for ages, and then I finally started putting stuff up. And you get feedback from some really good guys, and I, I was actually surprised how many like good people who know what they're talking about uh, were on there. Because I was just on—I told you—I was just on YouTube, like picking up advice from people. And you got people like telling you. I told you I saw that story where it's like he's telling you that he's a, a head currency analyst and strategist for this company, and he's just like in his living room with like his his baby's blocks, and you know. And dirty laundry around everywhere, and I'm like, this this guy, this guy doesn't know what he's what he's talking about. Well, that's a good point you bring it's up because of, yeah, it's a murky world for it. It's actually oh, it's can just be, it's just snakeskin snakeskin oil pictures going on yeah. all over the place yeah, on the so internet. That's it's a good point you bring that up because people are probably wary of us talking, but I can assure you that Walter Peters is a real person. You know, he's very helpful. 
Um, he will reply to you eventually. You just got to remind him sometimes. But he's um, the members in the forum now are all they we, we pay money a month to be a part of it. So you're not going to get people there that are just going to troll your account and you know just not help you at all because they're all paying there to grow and to learn. And professional traders will want you to develop because they might want to hire you as well once you get you know decent. Mm. So I think it's a win-win situation, and that's why. Obviously, people are reluctant to want to pay money, but it's one of these things. It's well worth, you know, putting in that little bit extra and actually wanting to, you know, grow your your potential and your knowledge a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the money. money yeah, the, the money's, money's like, like it's. It's, it's. You wouldn't you call, call it cheap per se, but, but at, at the, the same, same time, you don't get, get there, get, get in it, and then they're like, like, oh yeah, now, now you need, you know, you need to pay an extra six hundred bucks, and you get this, and you pay this, and you get that. You know, like, like if you yeah, uh, sign up for some people, they're like, yeah, yeah, it's only this. And it's, oh, no, actually, you need this, this whiz bang thing on your computer that costs, you know, 600 bucks or, or whatever. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. I, like, yeah, I mean, I was really happy once I found it, you know, especially as a, as a novice, once I found the, the, that website, the Naked Forex Now website, as a novice finding it. Uh, because there's plenty to learn from there, and it's yeah, just not ridiculous. I mean, I'm I've got a simple brain, Scotty. Like I've got like a almost like a Neanderthal's brain. I just want like two or three different things that I can concentrate on. I don't want heaps of indicators and moving averages and stuff on my on my um. That's right. That's what uh, this complements. You know, on my shit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Technical trading, everyone. So if people are not familiar with naked trading. It's just a chart. So I'll bring one up here, and it's just just a chart. There's nothing. There's no indicators, no RSIs, no MACDs or whatever. They, I don't even know what indicators really are. Like I wasn't interested in any of that either. So that is, you know, very clean, simplistic ways to look at the market. It's just analyzing the the candlesticks. Okay. Now, okay, Connor. So what I've got here is I've got your Ben Trade 2.0 uh, spreadsheet up here. Oh, yeah. And we've got some results. So just why don't you tell uh, the viewers how the system works and like what the rules are and how you trade it? Well, the rules are I'll, the rules are without having the rules up in front of me just off the top of my head. I could bring so in. So it's basically yeah, yeah. Basically, you've got your yeah, what what we trade like the the kangaroo tails and and the big shadows, which are the engulfing candle and you know yeah. um, like a gravestone sort of doji. Um, those are, in my in my view, bend trades, or you know, the the kangaroo tail and the next uh, candle going up. That's where you get. If yep. you would press the line on your on your uh, chart, you would get a um, big sort of bend in the in the um, in the line. Yeah. So I thought to myself, and I'd heard about bend trades before. I thought, and you've also probably got this your own when you. Yeah, back testing. You're like, geez, you know that that engulfing candle looks good, but it just doesn't quite get my rule. Doesn't quite, you know, match my rules. I wish I could take it. And then you start, you know, back testing and goes off to the races, off to the races. I've, so I was like, um, I've got the Aussie CAD daily up as well, and I'm just yeah, showing. Yeah, the so that's here. a good example. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's a good example. That. Without the candle, without the um, like the kangaroo tail that's uh, happening now. If you just look at the last two candles, that's uh, that's like a bend trade. Yep. And I would take that at the top of the the wick of the yep. last bullish candle, mm -hmm. and I would probably I'd, I'd just let go through. I'd do a zone exit. I'd just let it once it hits the support and resistance line, I'd push it to break even, and then I'd hope that it would push through there and then. Uh, off to the races sort of thing. But that, if you were to press the line on there, Scotty, I bet you yep. that you've got a pretty pretty sharp line. You've got a pretty sharp yeah. bend where, happening. Where would the stop loss be, potentially? Just, if I were doing it, yep. I would I would have it just below where that um, bearish candle was. You know, see where the yep. bearish candle was, where the wick is? Yep. yep. Yeah, I'd just put it just, just below that. Oh, yeah, I and, see it. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, once it hits the support and resistance, so I've got a support, uh, major support and resistance zone, some, uh, you know, resistance coming up. Once it touched that, 
Yep. Um, I'd start to look to uh, break even, and then hopefully put push through it and to the next zone. Yeah, I uh, see what you mean. Yeah, yep. So I'll bring up the. So when we're referring to zones here for people that aren't familiar with, so you bring up a line chart, and then that's you just identify areas where, you know, price rebounds of certain levels. Yeah, so if we're doing the day, if, if uh, I'm trying the daily, I'd, I'd do it on the weekly, the zones on the weekly. Yep. Yeah, but I've just found in my back testing, especially, that um, the bend trade is uh, starting to work well. I still use the same principles behind it as a kangaroo tail or a um, or a uh, big shadow, where you know. It, I don't want to have a lot of noise around the area. I just want it to bounce off and then take off. So if there was all choppy, I wouldn't be taking this. I wouldn't be taking this trade. But it looks like it's going in a good uptrend just there. Yep. So um, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with that. What are you? What are you looking at on the? Um, sounds like I'm picking a fight with you. What are you looking at on the um, dailies at the moment? I okay. So I've got. I've just brought your statistics up as well, so I'm just quickly showing people what things were and how the test went, and then. Oh yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. you had the average winner of 247, and then yeah. the average loser was 145. So that's very important for people to understand. So you want your winners to be greater than your your losing trades, and then I think you had a 50% win rate. 50% that's win rate, rate on it. Yep. Yep. And a 1.698. Uh, RDR, but I mean, I would round that to 1.7. So that's that's pretty decent actually. And then you had your total yeah. return. Yeah, and that's with the that's with the zone exit because I was doing the three bar exit, and uh, that was on my on a uh, big shadow trading there, and I was getting the the win rate quite high up there, but it was too discretionary, and I just don't want to think about these things. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to be really simple. So if I could just move it. Uh, below the zones, and I was getting about the same results anyway, like uh, profit was. So yeah, yeah, I like the zone exit nowadays. Okay, no, so that's good. So I I can go over my stuff, but I can't go over my system in detail when it's on YouTube. So what I'll do is I'll just go over the charts quickly, just to show everyone what I'm what I'm looking at, and I'll open up the pound Singapore dollar, and what are we? Well, actually, I've got the Singapore, the US Singapore. Essentially, what I look for is it is a double Bollinger Band indicators applied to the charts, but I've come from a background of learning price action. So it's more like having training wheels, really, and just learning the flow of the markets. But what I would be looking here for the Singapore dollar would be to come back up and touch the, the 20 day moving average. The 20 day moving average is actually the midline that is in my double Bollinger Band method that I've, that I've been taught. So as you can see, I missed a signal because I'm just showing them something that's that's bounced off the, uh, the, the middle band here and was a bearish signal. And that would have been a sell signal, but obviously that hasn't played out too well. But another one, the pound Singapore dollar sort of did, and there were two of them next to each other pretty much. And now you can see, we'll see where price goes. I mean, you can monitor it yourself as well, viewers, and to see how it pans out, but I'll just bring up just an example of um, the method. And the method is you've got two positions. One percent is targeting a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio, and the other one is a trailing exit. And I'll just bring up the equity curve. And it does work. So it just requires you to be, you know, a little bit patient and just yeah, you want to get those runners. Because if you can get them, then it'll make up because I get around 60% win rate at my very best. So and that's very rare, so you've just got to be aware that, yeah, you, like everything, it's just holding the winners, as you'd agree, Connor, um, is, is a little challenge, especially in real time. Yeah. You, and that's the challenge we face, really. That's yeah. that's sort of where I came in into your life, wasn't it? Yes. So, how? Yeah, the, we'll go to the next topic. We'll be um, having a trading accountability buddy, which is what Wall introduced us as, as a concept. And essentially what that means is, let's say for example, I'll zoom in here and I can, this is called a big shadow. So I've got the uh, pound Singapore dollar daily chart up and I'm just showing the viewers a classic big shadow um, setup. And now what I would say is uh, you have to wait for the candle to close 
But let's say I see this and I'll say, kind of look, I'm, I've noticed this. You can send a screenshot through Skype or sometimes I'll take a photo on my phone. And then you've got to have clear rules as well. And you've got to have a checklist for the rules. And then if there's more yeses than noes um, and it's looking really valid and it's, you know, you're happy and then you sort of have to justify that to your accountability buddy. And then from there, you can get into a trade or not. So yeah, so, so, so what, what you were doing, doing Scott, is just moving your thing, thing um, your yeah, stop loss willy nilly, nilly whenever, whenever you wanted. wanted. And then I said, look, if you're going to move your stop loss, make sure you tell me. That's so right. That way, so I'm sure that way people, at least yeah. you've got something accountable. And then you just pretty much stop moving your stop loss uh, just for the hell of it because you had to explain it to me while you were moving your stop loss. And when you had to actually explain to me, and you're just about to write it down or whatever, and you realise it wasn't a good reason, mm. then you wouldn't you wouldn't do it. And, and uh, you lose money yeah. like that, moving, manipulating what you've tested. Like I'm just showing the viewers now where the stop loss would be, just above the yeah. high of the bearish candle, and then where I would target potentially. And what I would do is, let's say I get a small move down, I would move you know, the line, I'll just draw another line down here. I'd, there was a little minor move down. I would move the stop loss to here and then potentially you could get cashed out too early and then w the flow might be more and more downward momentum and you just sabotage yourself, which is very common. So that's something to really keep, you know, understood. People new into to trading, you know, professionals will use this same method. They'll have someone there to refer to go, oh, look, I'm seeing this setup and, you know, you're both aware of the same rules. What are your thoughts on it? And that's really how the forum helps as well because you've got people there all trading a similar method. Everyone's going to have a unique twist to it, but you just have to be willing to ask people's opinions and that's, you know, how you improve your probability. Now, what we'll do is, Connor, um, what else is there to discuss? That's pretty much it. So we've gone over our demo mm. stuff. We've gone over um, some back testing results, and we we can have. Do you have the chart out in front of you as well? Are there any potential? Yeah, no. It was just the the Aussie CAD's the only one that sort of caught my eye. Yep. Um, I'll see how that's going after the Asian session. So you'll um, be looking. What what will be the um. The entry, if you would, is there? An it would entry be there? at the uh, not this. Um, it'd be at the top of the previous candle. Yep. So yep. you'd wait for this to come. I mean, with with this current candle that's printing, would you like that? Is that that's fine? How it is? You'd still have the entry. Yeah, that's fine. That's yep. fine. Yep. Yep. You know, the day's not up. You know, the day's not over. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that it, it 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 looks good. Oh, I'll just see how it, I'll just see how it goes, basically. So um, the entry there. Yeah, that's that's the only one that's uh, pointing out pointing out to me, Scotty. Yeah, what what are you gonna have a look at? The what was it? The GB. Yeah, uh, I think I've missed that. That's actually fallen quite substantially. Okay. So if that happened, um, that candle was triggered. For, for a sell on the 24th, so I have yeah. late to the party, but the US Singapore dollar, it's it's making a move up, and if it can actually, if the next candle can retrace, then that might be a signal potentially, and we might better get into that, but other than that, there's, there's nothing really, there's nothing really to report, unfortunately. But Have you got any plans for the plans for the rest of the week? You want to uh, back test anything? So more more back testing. I'm currently doing the pound yen, and for the forum members, what I'll do is I'll put that up on Wistia because I only get three uploads a month. So for a hundred dollars a month, I can do ten uploads, but I don't know if I can justify that right now. So what I'll do is I'll do yeah. one at the start of the month, and I'll do some live back testing for everyone that's a part of the forum. And then, you know, I can go over exactly what my method is because I use um, an indicator that's only available to people in the forum. So just with copyright issues and everything, it's, I can't show that to YouTube people. So, you know, sometimes you got to spend money to make money. So that's why the forum's helpful. But other things like the big shadow. So are you back, um, not back testing, demo trading the big shadow or just focus? Yeah, solely? yeah, I, I, bet I demo test it. I mean, I like the big shadow and kangaroo tails. Yep. But, um, I mean, how often do they turn up? 
Oh, right? I, yeah, you'll see that, everyone. So for someone who's actually properly tested it, um, it's gosh darn. <laughs> Especially on a daily. Like, you've, you've given up on the four hourly now, haven't you? Yeah, so for everyone who's all about shorter time frames, you have to check the candle every time it closes. So that means, you know, you have to set an alarm especially when you live in Australia because New York and London happens in the evening time for us. So you've got to be awake during sleeping time. So you like, or you get up every four hours. So just if you're doing a day job, it's daily is a little more sustainable. So you, you won't, it'll be harder to miss something because if you check the candles once a day that there, there we go, you know, and, but yeah, so that's, that's where we're at right now. But um, what do you think once a week we'll we'll do this and we'll update everyone what's going on and results and whatnot? Yeah, yeah, it sounds, sounds very good. Okay, and that's about it. And Donald Trump, he spoke as well, so I don't know what that's done in the markets, but um, we're not fundamental traders, everyone, so we like to enjoy watching that, but it's more funny mentals. It's not, it doesn't drive our decision making. <laughs> yeah, Cause yeah. All, I, told you, I told you the story <laughs> when... Uh, I was following that guy who was giving fundamentals on one of the uh, big platforms and, you know, the next week he'd come along and he'd say if he was wrong, he'd just start talking about it like he like he never mentioned it. The next week his, his narrative would be completely different anyway. So I gave up on the fundamentals and I'm doing an economics degree and I gave up on the fundamentals for trading that's, you know, that's right, ages everyone. ago. So we're more higher time frame, so it's really the daily. I'll have a look at the four hour to get a general idea of how the day's going if I'm going to look at an entry. But fundamentals are just, you know, you have to have a certain type of personality to just scalp the market. And it's very rare that you are going to be, you know, someone who won't self destruct using that method. So that's why we do the dailies because it's slower, it's boring, and it's more methodical. It's not get in there and get the adrenaline going because that's more gambling mentality instead of actually you know, being smart with your money and not, you know, blowing an account up in a day. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, that sounds good, Scotty. So what do you want to, do you want to leave it there? Yeah, I think so. We've gone a little bit, yeah. you know, 27 minutes. I think that was pretty thorough though. I think the first one's always going to be a bit longer, but anything in closing, Connor, for the viewers, anything you'd like to, to share? No, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Just keep, We're leaving keep on working. a good night. We'll leave, right. we'll leave it on a good night. That we will. We will. All right. Anyway, thanks for joining us, Connor. And um, thanks for watching, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.